component, I think, of what we're trying to do in, in many of these projects were to uh, improve the coordination between the inpatient and the outpatient setting uh, through some of the care transitions, um, uh, improve uh, the connection between uh, primary care residents and specialists, um, including resident, primary, uh, specialty residents and fellows and so on. And we know that there are a, a ton of challenges in being able to do that at various institutions, even those of you that have been on a track to do it, as you talked about, Andy, for some time. Um, I'm just wondering uh, if you comment, and we'll start with you, Andy, um, what were some of the, um, the, the, the achievements or you think some of the things that, were, that came about as a result of the demonstration, maybe they were aligned with places where uh, direction you were going in before, related to this integration of care issue, and how do you see that in terms of going forward? Uh, changes that we're enduring, changes that need to happen, um, where do things need to go to get to where they need to be around, around breaking down some of those barriers? And again, I, I mentioned some of the barriers, there's clearly you know, between behavioral health and, and uh, physical health as well as another big area that we've sort of pushed folks, so. All right. Um, well, thanks for that question. <laughs> um, so, uh, in, um, I'm told, I don't, I don't know how to fly an airplane, but I'm told that uh, there are principles that you're supposed to follow when you're doing such a thing. And, uh, and that is that there are priorities that you have to set. You aviate, then you navigate, then you communicate. The aviate means you have to stabilize the airplane. You have to make sure that the nose is pointing up. If you can't do that, nothing, nothing else matters, right? It doesn't matter where you think you want to go. It doesn't matter how you're going to tell people about it. You've got to get the plane stable. And I would say that some of the um, integration challenges that we face start at various different levels, you know, as Foster was mentioning. So one of the things I think that was really helpful with this was just getting folks within any one of our practices to communicate with one another in the practice, let alone what's going on outside the practice. So there's a terrific video that my colleagues from pediatrics have uh, have uh, made, and you can see it in the other room, about huddles that are taking place now at one of the practices that were involved in this. Those kinds of huddles where the nurses and the doctors are reviewing the patients that have come in and what they're planning to do during the course of the day, obviously, you know, from the standpoint of uh, many people, that's just common sense, but it, it was not happening. And now that that does happen, I think that the care that's being delivered within that context is much better. The issue about communicating then about patients who are transitioning from one part of our system to another is one of the other great challenges. So we, you know, we have a big system, 90,000 discharges a year coming out of the hospital. That a lot, that's a lot of people to try and follow up on. And we are relatively rich in resources because we have, as I said, this care management organization that can follow up on some of that stuff. But to make sure that the folks at the CMO know what the folks at the site are communicating about, let alone what the folks who plan the discharge on the inpatient service know about, is a big uh, is a big challenge, and it remains a challenge. But I think one of the things that we've been called it, you know, that has called our attention to this uh, this grant has called our attention to is the importance of trying to get at those kinds of issues. The one thing I will say, and we'll probably come back to this, but I don't want to take a lot of time on it now, and that is that all of this kind of activity. Um, is expensive. It, it's labor intensive and it costs money. And until and unless we confront the challenge of how we um, arrange the financing for this, um, all of the greatest intentions and all of some of the activities that we're doing um, won't really matter because we won't be able to sustain them. So one of the issues about moving from a fee-for-service environment to a value-based environment is coming around to our understanding of how that financing occurs. And maybe we'll have some chance to talk about that in a bit. Great.